In 1972, I had the privilege of preaching in Haiti. In Haiti, in the city of Port-au-Prince, the Duvalier Stadium, Papa Doc was gone and Baby Doc was in charge. I was preaching in the large stadium. 50,000 people were coming out. It goes back to 1972. I was on the radio preaching on the only station they had four and a half hours every evening. Well, a man was converted in those meetings and went to his neighbor because his neighbor had a boy who was insane. When he was 10 years of age, he had lost his mind. Now he was 15. The boy was totally insane, didn't know who he was, out of it completely. They would tie a rope around his hands and lead him like we would lead a calf on the farm. They would tie him to his bed at night. They would tie him down so he wouldn't go into the water or the fire to destroy himself. And this neighbor man, a Roman Catholic, came to the father and mother of this son, of their son, and said, bring this boy to the stadium. Because as a man from Canada, he's preaching and God is performing miracles. The father said, you take him. I've taken him to the priest. I've taken him to the bishop. I've had the holy water and the holy smoke treatment. I've taken him to the obia man, the witch doctor. Nothing's helped. So then what happened was the father said, you take the boy. And the neighbor boy took the boy. To, the neighbor man, pardon me, took the boy to the meeting. And while I was preaching, suddenly, as I prayed the prayer of faith over this vast crowd, because 40,000 people had come down from the bleachers and had received Christ, in that meeting. And among them was this man and this neighbor boy. And as I prayed the prayer of faith, the power of God was so strong that suddenly the boy was healed. Of course, I didn't touch him. I didn't even know he was there. And all of a sudden, the boy, he looked up and said to the neighbor, why are my hands tied? He said, are you okay, son? Well, of course I'm okay. What is your name? He told him. And he was totally normal. He brought him to the podium, to the platform, and before 50,000 people and reaching out to several millions by radio, he gave his testimony how that for five years he had been insane because all things are possible to him that believe it. And in the book of Luke's gospel, the fifth chapter, it says, Behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not, by way of, by that way, they, because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, thy sins be forgiven thee. And people wondered, how could this man forgive sins? Only God could forgive sins. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. And Jesus said, which is easier, not which is harder, but which is easier, to say to this man, that sins are forgiven thee, or to say, rise and walk. But that ye may know, that ye might know that the Son of Man had power upon the earth to forgive sins. I say to the palsied man, the crippled man, rise, take up the bed and walk. And immediately he arose. Which is easier? It's not hard for Jesus to forgive your sins. It's not hard for Jesus to heal your sick body. It's not difficult for Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Just a few weeks ago at the house of prayer on Highway 623, a young couple who had given their hearts to Christ some months ago came. They were living in Edmonton. They decided it was too far to come. And then they said, no, we need to come to the house of prayer to feel the presence of God. So they drive in from Edmonton and God instantly baptized her with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, filled with the Holy Spirit. People are coming from all over now. We have Wednesday night services also at seven o'clock where I'm teaching the word of God in a Bible seminar every Sunday morning at 11 and then every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, preaching the unadulterated Word of God and seeing God's miracles. 
because he is the same yesterday and today and forever. God bless you, my friend. I hope to see you soon at the House of Prayer, Highway 623, just south of New Shreptown.